Okay. Uh, we should be live on Twitch. Let me get a quick audio check here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, cool. Yeah. We are good to go. Okay, 248. Okay. Where's my record button? I lost you. Okay, we... I just want to... I have the Twitch open at the same time, but it's muted, so... Yeah. Okay. It's full screen. Hold on. This thing is full screen. I don't need GarageBand full screen. Okay. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. This is episode, and I just lost that, 248. I know, counting is hard, but anyway, it's episode 248. I know we took an extended time off after DEF CON. It's, it's, security news is starting to come back. Like, it's, it's getting there. We're hearing some new exploits, but they're really, really technical. And, and we always said that this is not necessarily the best technical uh, thing for you. You should find out more, a tech, as somebody would say, a more technical security podcast. But even if you listen to security now, and well, before that, let's get Tom in. Hi, Tom. Hi, I'm here. Uh, okay. So, so we, we talk about we want to be for the average person. Like If you listen to Security Now, which we said was a really good, uh, better, more advanced one, you're listening to an hour and a half of news and then 20 minutes of something that, that we don't feel is like really necessary. So I recommend that if you want to listen more Security News, go there and, and Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte will get you further in. But it's what is what is Wi-Fi 6, the technical details going to do for you is not really what we're about. We could talk about Wi-Fi 6, but just it's it's OK. You're going to get it with a new router. We'd rather talk about updating your router or new password type things that you should be focusing on. So that that's why sometimes we have a few weeks in between. Again, if you want, go into the WhatsApp group, message us. We will get you into the WhatsApp group and go from there. Now, on the house side, you can see that. I did buy myself a green screen and Tom graciously figured out a way to put the background. So now we have really awesome backgrounds and I, I'm very happy about that. I'm looking at the live stream and it's awesome. So thank you, Tom. Always happy to help. Okay. And, uh, and just like you were saying, like we can, we can deep dive into like, okay, how exactly does, you know, TCP IP set up a session and how does it do packet retransmission and what exactly goes into a TLS connection and what happens with that cryptographic handshake. But frankly, it doesn't help you protect yourself or your grandmother unless you or your grandmother are like building TLS stacks by hand, which if you are building TLS stacks by hand, join the WhatsApp group and, uh, and tell us all about it because that's awesome. Also, if your grandmother is building TLS stacks by hand, you might want to just like take to Twitter and tell people because that's incredible. And uh, you and your grandmother should be very proud that you are so awesome. TLS stacking grandma, Twitter handle. There you go. So that's so free. You somebody, can have that. Somebody on Twitter said, uh, somebody asked me what happens when you hit, when you type a URL into the website and hit enter. And then did a Twitter thread on that. <laughs> And yep. I did not hit expand because that would not be short or fun to read as a Twitter thread. So, but things like that, we can go through if you want. We absolutely can do. But again, I people come back to me and say, how do I get a secure password? Or I got this random strange phishing email. Those are more important because they are coming fast and furious. And, and we do want to, uh, and to do things like that. Or our topic today. Uh, your your kid's school hopefully is somewhat in person. And for me, I am actually working, but most schools around me are closed, which is causing a huge thing for parents, which is not this podcast. However, how do you keep your kids safe? And we we, we touched back on that back in March and April, but we thought that this would be a few weeks and they would go into the summer and they would find it out. But now school's starting and they're expecting a lot of a lot of Zoom sessions and and we just want to talk about what to do. And I know Tom. Tom's better at explaining the different things. He doesn't have the kids that that I have. But but let's deep dive and let's talk about what we can do as far as privacy settings. So anything you want to add before we start? So the first thing, take that school laptop and just bury it in concrete, throw it in the middle of the ocean, and that's the best 
most secure guaranteed way to keep you and your family safe from any kind of spying eyes or issues that could arise with that school laptop. Now, that said, it might get you, you know, fined or yelled at by the school district. It could cause your child to flunk out of school entirely. But if security is your main concern when it comes to these unknown technology devices in your house, burying it in a basically a foot or two of concrete and throwing it in the deepest part of the ocean that you could reasonably get to is the solution. Well, okay. So for the first problem is if you haven't <laughs> noticed anything uh, as far as work from home, you cannot find. There are no sub $500 laptops yeah. anywhere, like literally anywhere. And if you're saying that can't be, I'm going to go to Amazon. They are not. Trust me. They are not. And if you're looking for a webcam or a microphone or other stuff like that to do these Zoom calls or or to do teleconferencing at all, you're looking at at least a hundred bucks for an average webcam, at least ninety bucks for a decent microphone. So this is causing a lot of schools a lot of problems. My school district said we're we're not expecting Chromebooks K to two until October. And you're saying, but school starts in September. And the answer is, yes, we have a really, really big problem. And unfortunately, there's no solution to this. It's it's like, well, I'll buy something. You're not going to be able to. And I'm not saying now you're going to send me all this hate mail that there's, I, I found one on Amazon, this and that. But it is really hard to find anything work from home related. So there are shortages out there. There's There's shortages and it's not like, you know, it's not only that people are buying this stuff en masse because they need to now and have needed to for a while, right? It's been a growing problem and things are not really getting better, at least here. Um, it's, it's that there are global manufacturing shortages. There are issues actually producing, developing, and manufacturing this technology to even put it on shelves. Like this is not just a, a demand is outweighing supply problem. It's that supply is just having issues keeping itself afloat. So the good news is, is that schools do understand that and they're issuing most students Chromebooks. Um, I, I, I know that our school is bought Chromebooks or iPads, things like that. So if you have a 10-year-old laptop over there, you may want to be buying a solid-state drive and throwing it in there may be your way of getting it. You can find solid-state drives. They're pretty good because they're components. Components are okay. It's the whole together. Putting that in, reinstalling Windows, you should be probably okay. Um, for my son, he's probably going to use my, um, my 10-year-old MacBook. But there you go. It's but that's that's a real problem. I sold a webcam back in April for like double the price, and I, I kind of feel bad, but then I really kind of don't because at this point, how do you not don't don't email me? How do you not have a webcam? I mean, I guess if you're I don't know. I have an iMac. Uh, ever, I, I don't know too many people who have desktops anymore unless they're gaming. So I, I thought that everyone has a webcam or whatever it is or a cheap tablet. Like the tablets are, are for Zoom shouldn't be that expensive. So I don't if, know. If you do have a, a really, really old laptop, it, it's probably running Windows 7. I mean, you know, help us all if... Uh, if it's running Vista or XP. Uh, but if you are running Windows 7, keep in mind, Windows 7 is end of life. It's not getting patches anymore. It's it's basically waiting for the next big wave of something to hit and wipe it all out, just like Windows XP back in the day. Um, so if you do have Windows 7, go go just, just pay the money. Just buy Windows 10. You can get it on a USB stick, you can get it in a CD or uh, I mean DVD format. Um, or if you wanted to download and burn a DVD yourself, you can actually buy a key directly from Microsoft. They give you the option to just download an ISO and burn it. They give you all the applications you'll need. Um, you will need a DVD burner on some newer laptops. You know, having optical media drives at all is a rarity. Um, but if you want to, you can actually get an external one, hook it up through USB. That's what I do on my systems. Um, yeah, there's lots of ways, but just make sure, make sure you're running Windows 10 if you do have a Windows laptop. Or if you wanted to, and again, this is gonna be way more technical and probably more trouble than it's worth, you could try your hand at Linux. Keep in mind that you are basically limiting yourself to web-based tools at that point because most education software will not have a Linux version. 
Hopefully well, it's all the, web-based. The good news is most schools are going Chromebook. So Chrome OS will be a lot of web-based and you can run Chrome on Linux. The yep. other thing I would recommend and I actually got rid of three of them to as donation was is a second monitor. Get your make yourself comfortable. It's if the I don't know, again, we don't know the long haul of this, but if you want your kids to be successful, a second monitor will do really well, a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, don't say that you're good at trackpad dexterity is a thing. So try to get them a nice, comfortable chair, a pair of headphones, because if they're working next to you, all that. And all of those things, chairs are a little, I think have some short supply, but keyboard and mice should be okay. Um, I think that, if, I don't um... know about the monitors. Yeah, monitors have been kind of hit or miss depending on what you want. I know the gaming specific monitors have been um at at the very least a little a little bit hiked up in price um cuz people are looking for fun ways to pass time at home cuz you know, we're not going to concerts or baseball games right now. So what else are we going to do except sit here and play Minecraft? Which by the way, if you're looking for a way to distract your children, get them out of your hair, especially if you're combining this with headphones, Minecraft Minecraft is really cheap and it is very effective at distracting people. I bought Minecraft for my son, but he wants he just rather watch other people do it. So by the way, if you're our age, you know, your mid-30s, and you have kids who are not in their mid-30s, we went from hating to be Luigi to now not even wanting to be Luigi and just watching Mario. Everyone now is just watching other people play games. And I don't understand it. Somebody can explain that to me, but I, I, I just don't get it. So my son, all he does is watch other people ma- play Minecraft. And I'm like, I have this setup for you. I have this second monitor. I have everything. All you got to do is go upstairs. And he's like, but the guy is playing it. I can just watch him. I'm like, okay whatever you want so so th- that's that and and i mean like i said it's it's all of this is in short supply so think about what you need and then start trying to source it out and going from there this idea of oh i'll just wait a few weeks i think it's just going to exponentially grow once school starts and people are saying wait a second you don't have headphones or they have to go someplace with headphones or whatever it is so my school is actually opening and i have to talk i'm virtual i'm i'm broadcasting virtually like i have microsoft teams out which i want to get to in a minute and the kids who are there are going to watch me teach and the kids at home are going to listen and I guess watch me teach. And I think headphones are going to be at a premium, especially really cheap ones, wired ones that go into your device or whatever it is. And again, Apple got rid of the headphone jack and everyone followed suit. That's also now a different problem with latency and everything else. So it's all these things. Headphones, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why headphones are important. So like the super important thing is on a video conference, right? If I unplug my headphones right now, you're going to get a crazy amount of feedback, right? You're, you're going to hear like a bunch of echoes. It's going to like reverberate. It's terrible to do video conferencing without headphones of some kind. Um, but if you are a parent, that is not the important part about headphones, right? Like, let's say you don't care about your kids teleconferencing, whatever, they can deal with the feedback and the the bad audio quality. The important thing is that you don't have to listen to the repetitive YouTube videos they watch. You don't have to have to listen to them watching some guy play Minecraft on whatever streaming platform they are. It's headphones. It's great. It keeps the noise out. And that's the most important thing that you can do as a parent is try to limit your frustration with your child and headphones are a fantastic way to do that. So uh, we're about halfway, but the next part is if you have a device, if you, if you have extra devices, reach out, please reach out, do me a favor, reach out to the schools and say you have extra devices. They are literally repurposing anything that can hold a connection. So my question to Tom before we deep dive more is can a Raspberry Pi four with a monitor sufficiently do all the work? I think the answer is yes. Kind of. Um, So the Pi 4, if you buy a Pi 4, make sure to get a case with a fan. It still has, like, it's gotten better, but it still has some issues with thermal offloading, which is a fancy way of saying the thing gets way too hot and it can't process very fast because it's trying not to die. Um, So get a case with a fan, or if you don't have a fan but you've got a Pi 4, 
take just a desk fan and just sit it next to the thing. Um, I think it can do a decent job of doing this work. Video encoding, streaming, like that stuff takes a whole lot of umph, and the Raspberry Pi isn't known for having very much umph. Now, it's a cheap $35 all in one computer, minus a you know, monitor, keyboard, mouse, that sort of thing. But if you're desperate, if you want to try it out, yeah, try out the Raspberry Pi. Again, you might run into those same supply problems because everybody is buying Raspberry Pis right now. Um, but well, let's let's double that up. Try. Let's do Amazon Fire because I think it's the cheapest tablet you can buy for mm -hmm. your video streaming. Like you just prop it up on the side, and then you have your Raspberry Pi with mouse keyboard for the the writing, the texting, and all the other stuff. I, I feel yeah. like. A, a, Again, we're just trying to find other ways. So, okay, so you have a device or the expectation is you have it because I think their first priority is giving it to the, the free and reduced lunch people. So the people who get services will probably get something first, but now you have this. Now, security-wise, what should we do? And I think the first thing is if you have the guest network, so again, it depends how tinfoil hat you are. The school right now is not trying to spy on your children. They're right now just trying to get devices to all the kids. But there's probably some software on them that's reporting analytics. And I'm not. And like I said, I don't think they're spying on anybody. But they're pro they may be doing metrics at some level. They're logging things because they have to keep kids safe. So if you have a guest network, so if you have Xfinity, I think, or any of the cable cable providers, they do come with a guest network. Hop onto the guest network. Throw the kids onto the guest network. I wouldn't tell the kids, oh, let's use Plex or access our server from the main one. Now, if you have really younger kids, you're going to have to do this. If you have high school kids, try and push them on the guest network and say, here's another device to do your internal stuff with. Again, you may not be able to do that, but if you can, that's not a bad idea, right? Yeah, and I mean, let's let's be real. I know I was a child once, believe it or not. Um yeah, they'll click everything. It's probably better to throw that stuff on the guest network anyway, uh, because like, you know, the the school devices are supposed to be used for just school stuff. It's going to be used for a lot of stuff, not just school, right? And if they click the wrong thing, if they install the wrong software, and now with Chromebooks, this is less of a concern. It's still a small concern, but it's less of a concern. But with a general purpose PC, with a Windows machine especially, they click the wrong thing and the wrong Facebook message, and now they've owned the entire computer. Hopefully it's not a school system, because then you've got to work with school IT to get everything right. re-imaged, and it's just, it's a massive pain for everyone involved. Um, so our school is good. Our school will send out the, the network, uh, I guess they can do it remotely, the wipe code. Oh, nice. So they can actually do that. The problem is you don't want it to get on your network. That's the next topic. So if you can go on the guest network, it can't screw up too much and too bad. So the worst thing is you reformat. They tell you to to hit whatever, control, delete codes to, to reformat, and you're good. Um, so keeping it updated, all the good security practices we're telling you, now you have to watch because they're your kid and you're at home and that's their one device out because if they screwed up their their machine, now you, your work's not going to let them do schoolwork on it. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, one thing I would, I would keep in mind, and it's... This is pretty tinfoil hatty. I'm going to just preface this by saying that. When your kid is done with the laptop or done with the device, put it away, shut it, put it away, put it in a drawer or something. There have been very rare. I want to, I want to make sure that you understand this. This is right. extremely rare, like literally one to two cases I have heard about where somebody has been unscrupulous and has IT access to the system and has done bad things with cameras and spying on kids when they shouldn't have been right i mean you, i will absolutely make the argument that there are very little to almost no reasons for an it person to activate a camera um, unless like a device is reported stolen or whatever right but it has happened so if you want that kind of belt and suspenders insurance to guard against an extremely rare event throw it in a drawer close the laptop, make sure the webcam's not pointed at anything, you know, and, and anyway, you can, you can bring it in this kind of this, nah, clean up after yourself, clean your room, put your computer in a drawer. Um, just Even something to think about. 
even simpler if you have a, P, a post-it note or get something easy like a post-it note yeah. and put it over the camera some computers my computer has a camera at the bottom of the keyboard as well so when you put it in what they call tent mode you can see it so you may need two stickers but a good idea is to maybe put a sticker on it because if this is your only device and you're doing a lot of stuff putting it away may not be able to do it also when we say put it away I, I, I would maybe say put it to sleep so it can get updates or put it facing a wall because I, I know that my our, our IT likes to sometimes force updates in the middle of meetings. You don't want that to happen. So because teachers don't really understand, wait a second, my computer is updating. They're going to say, but don't didn't you have seven days to postpone it? And you don't want to be, I waited seven days, but you don't want the one in the middle. So, so you want to work on that. And if you want to keep everything organized, like if you buy like a travel mouse or something, you know, grab, grab a, a super cheap backpack or a bag or like one of the random tote bags that you got from DEF CON six years ago or, <laughs> or something like that and throw it all in the bag, right? Just keep stuff organized, keep stuff kind of out of view, make sure that the camera can see the inside of a bag or something and, and not your, you know, your family living room or whatever. So I don't want to I don't want to jump on your stories about IT doing that. But as a teacher, we actually brought this up. What happens on the video stream where you see something you shouldn't be seeing? Maybe an underage somebody underage drinking on the stream or or something in the background that shouldn't be there or drug paraphernalia or any of the things that you have to report to child services. What do you do? So as you can see, I bought a green screen. Not that I have any of this stuff behind me, but it's one of those things. I'm I not, think I'm I say- saw a printer behind you at one point in time. Well, we need printers because teachers don't <laughs> understand what printers that that you can do things. But yes, I do have a printer behind me. But again, I'm not saying that you, if you have the money or you want to get a green screen or a green sheet, a literal green sheet, or just a, a neutral color background, get a get a bed sheet. That won't be the Poster worst room. idea. Yeah, that won't be the worst idea in the world to literally have something behind to like if you're working or whatever it is to to just block out. And again, I'm from the teacher side of me to keep the student engaged in let's say we're going to work because kids don't understand that okay, you can be working on your bed and you're working. They're gonna see you on your bed and you're not working. You don't want you want them to be focused on whatever it is. So I've seen on on Pinterest and all these things like boards where they put the kid like in the cone of silence. I don't necessarily think you need that, but the idea of setting them up. So when you're done with your day, you close the laptop if it's connected with the wire and mouse and and move on from your day. So that's good. The last thing I, I necessarily want to talk about is the software that you, the teachers are, are they're going to ask. Now, all schools are different. Our school district, after nine years of me complaining, listened, and we have a very limited amount of software we can use where it has to be board approved and it must comply with COPPA. Always it must comply with COPPA and FERPA. However, they were that's one of the things they were talking about. But other schools are just saying anything. They may be saying, look, Google Classroom is one. They may say, you know what, Khan Academy is two. Reading Works is three. Some science program is four. And we just it goes on and on. And you're at the point you're saying, wait a second, where are all these privacy policies? The school's trying to educate your child remotely. Uh, I know that privacy is important, but they're going to throw that secondary and saying, look, we just need this to work. Like Zoom wasn't Zoom wasn't built to comply with COPPA, but it worked for the time. So they used it. We got off Zoom. We are now on Microsoft Teams. And so so we're happy with that. But just check the software. And again, this is why maybe only doing schoolwork on the school computer is going to be the right answer. Yeah, we've. I, we've tried to maintain like a, a non tinfoil hatty, you know, yeah. kind of moderate perspective on, on security issues. And we're right now living in really strange times. And unfortunately that does mean that some things like, like zoom, right. Which is a security disaster, right? They're, they're trying, they're really trying to do the right thing. They're just really inept at doing the right thing. Um, but unfortunately zoom, seems to be the thing that works the easiest that kids can use that teachers can use and administrators can kind of sort of administrate and yeah it's not really the right answer it's not the best answer it's definitely not the most secure answer but 
at the end of the day, it works. And that's honestly what we have to consider for priority number zero is what works in this weird situation, in this weird kind of messed up reality that we're all living in right now. And the other stuff, yeah, we want it, but it's not the most important thing, right? What gets the job done today might not be the best answer, but it fits right now. Um, hopefully we can clean it up later. And I, I realize there's a lot of slippery slope arguments to that, but we'll have to see. Look, we have the analogy of for the people in school, how do you do fire drills and social distancing? We don't have an answer to that yet. And the only answers we're really getting is we'll figure that out when the time comes or we're going to try or whatever it is. And maybe they'll figure this out in the next week or two, but it's one of those it's we want everyone to be safe, but we understand masks and social distancing and everything else. And it's one of those, maybe we just don't do fire drills or we do them at the end of the day, or we do them when students are not in the building to comply. It's we're doing whatever we can. Yes, if we were here to tell you how to absolutely be secure, we would say, we want you to read all the privacy policies. We don't want you to sign up for all these services and we want you to try, but we can't. You. Zoom, like we said, Zoom was not developed for for schools. They're trying, but they're still not developed for schools. Microsoft Teams is learning. Google is learning. They're all learning, but it's just not there. So, so obviously, if you have a concern, bring it up with this uh, with your child's teacher. Raise it to administration because, to be honest, they may not know. They may just say, you know what, I need this to work. But if you can offer a solution to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't be using this software, I have a better one, they're more likely to listen and bring it up and go from there and and try to be better. But if, it, like I said, if you can try and silo the, uh, your child's work on the school computer, you can on the guest network and try to teach them safe uh, browsing habits, all of this is going to go a lot smoother. Yeah, it's... I. I do have to give um, another shout out. I know we we keep shouting this out, but Chromebooks are fantastic. Uh, really, really, really low exploitable threat profile. You can you can you know blow them up, throw them in a lake, replace them. You know, I mean, now you can't really replace them very easily, but it stuff is constantly backed up to the cloud. Chromebooks are a great solution, um, and. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call again. If you've got spare devices, if you've got stuff that you know could maybe help out a, a teacher or a classroom in need, like that that old Android tablet that you've got sitting there, right? It you haven't used it. It's gathering dust. It's it's sitting literally in the basket with all the magazines by your couch. Yeah, that one. I know that one. Grab that tablet and reach out to a teacher and say, Hey, could you use this for Zoom? Could a kid use this for Zoom? Could you just use it to like throw, you know, homework or slides or, or an educational video on it? Then here, take it. Um, try to see what you can do to help out. And again, obviously, so as a teacher, my last thing to say is, is look, we all want virtual learning to end. We want to send everyone back in school. We want them to be safe. We want to know that everything is okay. The teachers were thrown into this. I don't care what political stance you have now, but the faster we get this virus under control, the ver the easier this will all be just to go back. So if you have a problem, don't just complain. Email your child's teacher. They are working. I promise you they're working. So if you don't like something on the device, you don't like this passage, you don't like this. I'll give you an example. We have a movie watching class. It's called Film Appreciation for the Seniors. But you it's can't a great class. You can't stream these shows on, 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 on like, you can't zoom the Netflix show. It's a violation of DMCA and copyright and everything else. So now the teacher has to come up with free and open source movies that they can stream and where to get it and how to get it and how to watch it and all this other things. I always love it. Film appreciation has the most amount of homework because if you miss a day, you got to watch the movie. <laughs> So you have a two hours of homework because you missed the movie or whatever it was. So how is how is the cooking class going to cook? How is the engineering class going to use uh, uh, Autodesk? So if, if you're saying, how come you're not doing this in this class? There may be a reason. Try Come up with solutions first. Let's be proactive together. And, and we understand that, again, this is a security show. So if there are security issues, bring them up. 
You'll be surprised. Hopefully you won't be turned on deaf ears. Most people will listen, but offer solutions. Try to keep your kids safe because now you're walking away. You're doing your work. You're not watching what they're doing. Try to find a way to do that monitoring. But at the end of the day, it's it's we're all in this together and we're trying to be as safe as possible. Yeah. So we're going to say now we're going to say bye and we're out of time but we're going to remind you we do have our whatsapp group uh tweet us if you have better topics if we miss something let us know in there we will be more than happy to do more deep dives we will profess our love for microsoft even more in there Indeed. and, and yeah and i know that this is going to be a big topic coming coming forward how uh, exploitations and school software and everything else so have questions we're here we hope to be here next week so bye everyone see ya okay great let me shut down